Welcome, Caleb. Hi, guys. So as I was just introduced, I'm Caleb and I'm from Leap Motion. And I think this being a fairly uh, familiar community, a community that's familiar with VR, you probably have a good understanding about what we do. But today I want to talk a little bit about some of the fundamental goals, what we've been trying to accomplish with this idea of hand tracking, uh, and in particular applied to VR. Um, and then share with you some of what we've been working on. And then ultimately, uh, as with everything in VR, it's best to actually just try a demo um, because explaining virtual reality in words, you're always going to come up short. So overall, um, we've been around for about six years and we've always been focusing on the single goal of tracking the hands very quickly, very accurately, bringing a person's physical hands into the digital world. And the reason behind this, why we started down this path, has always been this very fundamental belief that you know, technology should make us better. And that sounds pretty obvious, and it seems like in a lot of ways technology does make us better, but ultimately we realized that there was a fundamental problem, a problem that was really limiting how people use computers. Um, and that problem is input, because ultimately we see that technology is getting faster, it's getting smaller, it's getting more powerful, you know, screens are higher resolution, but ultimately, I'm using my computer in a pretty similar way now than I was 10 years ago. You know, I have this supercomputer in my pocket, and it's capable of you know, billions of operations per second. But at the end of the day, I'm still using it as a notepad and a newspaper. And ultimately, we think that that's because we have a very low bandwidth input. So the dream came along, we thought, what about if we could track the hands um, and we can start to interact with the digital world in the same way that we interact with the physical world. And to do that, we needed to track the hands. And so we started down this you know, long path. Hand tracking is actually one of the hardest problems um, in computer vision uh, because you know, hands are complex. Uh, it's why they're very powerful tools. And as you guys probably know, we you know, have a device that a lot of developers are attaching to VR headsets these days. Um, and this is the late motion peripheral. And we found that virtual reality is a very compelling use case for this hand tracking technology. Um, ultimately, the first time that we put on a headset and kind of took a look at the physical hand and saw that mirrored in the digital world, it was kind of an aha moment when you realize that I can no longer really tell the difference between what's my physical hand and what's my digital hand. Um, your brain just kind of sees them as the same thing. And ultimately, we think that this is the most powerful way to interact with virtual and augmented reality. And kind of the way that um, you know, we have to, have to have this type of an input in order to make VR um, the type of a medium that we really want it to be. It should be very natural, it should be very accessible, it should be very human, it should just start to feel like real life. So um, we, in February, we released our Orion tracking update, and we've always had this really interesting hybrid approach where we have uh, our hardware, um, and, but we're, we're mostly a software company. So uh, we have our Leap Motion peripheral, and uh, beneath that black window are two cameras, and they're looking out at the world, and ultimately they see your hands, and then we can reconstruct a skeletal model. Um, but at the same time, what that allows us to do is, since we have this hardware out in the field, we can make you know, dramatic software updates. And so with the Orion update, we took our whole tracking pipeline and said, what does this look like in VR? And we kind of reworked everything from the ground up to make a VR tracking system. And the response has been incredibly positive. Um, it's really amazing to be able to start to interact with things you know, in a natural way. So that was last February, and I want to fill you in on uh, a little bit about what we've been working on uh, since then. So we're always improving the tracking algorithms, and we always will. You know, hand tracking is, as I said, a very difficult problem, and there's always ways that we can you know, continue to make it better. But one of the big focuses for us over the last you know, 10 months um, has been focusing on mobile VR. And ultimately, I think we're seeing VR have a very interesting moment right now, where we have very compelling PC VR experiences. Um, and at the same time, we also have systems like the Gear VR and, and many other systems that are starting to use mobile phones to make a very compelling virtual reality experience. But ultimately, we see input as a real barrier to these mobile systems ever taking off. Ultimately, a lot of people kind of look at them as you know, second-class citizens to those PC uh, VR experiences. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that input is just incredibly limited. So we thought, what if we could bring this hand tracking to a mobile platform? 
And that sounds, you know, maybe like a simple task, you know, it's software, move it from uh, the PC over into the mobile context. But ultimately, we had to do a lot of things. So first, uh, we took it as an opportunity to, uh, to create some new hardware. So this new hardware, uh, we, we announced it uh, last Monday, and uh, we listened to the developer community to hear about um, what types of things you really wanted from this new system. And one of the fundamental uh, requests was expanding the field of view. So previously on the peripheral, the field of view was 140 degrees by 120 degrees. So it's wider than uh, most HMDs out there, but there were certain actions, you know, throwing, or if you had social VR context, where you just really wanted uh, the tracking to have a, a wider range. Um, and so we, we did that. We, we made it in uh, so that the, the lenses see a full 180 degrees by 180 degrees. So very, very wide field of view. Um, and then some other things that, uh, that uh, on the hardware side that we felt were very important to emphasize were making it very small, um, and very easy to embed into headsets. Because that's what we're really going for right now. We want this to be a fundamental input for virtual reality itself. So we're working with a lot of big OEMs to build the, head, the, the technology right into the headset, and then that becomes your default input. Um, on the software side though, so that's, that's kind of the, the hardware side of the, of the platform, but on the software side, we really had to make some uh, big steps there. So ultimately, we, we had to make our hand tracking run at about 10 times the speed. Because even though it only uses a little fraction of the CPU on the desktop, uh, ultimately VR on a mobile phone is an incredibly demanding uh, load on the CPU. So we had to make it run on just a little fraction of a single core of the CPU so that you know, developers could continue to make very compelling experiences. Um, and we had to do all of that while maintaining the fidelity that we had with our overhand tracking system. So um, what we're going to have today is over there, we've got our, our booth and um, we're going to be showing off um, this system here. So um, this is a, a, a reference design for what an embedded uh, headset will look like. So um, this is your standard Gear VR and on the front of it we have a, a, a module that's embedded right into this uh, little window below. And uh, you can't see the module in there, um, it's behind IR, uh, um, an IR window, um, but it's, it's just right in there and uh, you'll get to see a little bit about how that works. Um, and so uh, this will just be running on a standard Gear VR type platform. We're using an S7 um, and I don't know if uh, how many of you got to try our previous blocks experience, um, but we're going to be demonstrating uh, a new version of that uh, running all on a mobile phone. So ultimately, uh, we see that this is really a big step forward for uh, mobile VR, of course, because once we expand the input, making it a much richer input, we'll be able to develop a lot richer content. Um, and ultimately, that will make the platform develop as a whole. Um, but we also see it as a step forward for virtual reality as a whole. Um, so we think that uh, virtual reality is something where PC headsets, uh, it's great to have hand tracking, and we're definitely focused on that too. Um, but ultimately, it will be really wonderful when we have uh, a world where we can put a couple of VR headsets in a backpack and go over to a friend's house, put on a, a VR headset, and immediately be transported into a different world. So uh, that's, I want to keep it a little bit short and uh, we'll jump to the, the demo uh, once this is all done. But, um, and we can answer a lot of questions over there, but i um, curious if anybody has any, any more general questions that would be interesting for the whole audience. Um, can answer a couple questions, then move on to the demo. Thanks. So the hand tracking, is, the question here is, um, is the hand tracking running on the phone processor? Or is it running on its own processor? Um, here the, the tracking is running entirely on the CPU of the host. So, um, so the question here is, how does the tracking compare to Leap Motion in the past? Um, I would say that it's you know full Orion class tracking. Um, you're going to see a couple of different things on the mobile platform. Uh, particularly, it has a wider field of view, so it has a wider tracking range. Um, but generally, you should see the same type of fidelity that you see from the desktop system. I 
isolated apps on mobile phones are going to be not linked to how do you update the driver across apps? So the question here is, suppose you have a bunch of different apps that are using Leap Motion tracking, and we update the tracking. Um, how do the apps have access to that? So ultimately, uh, we have a service running on the phone, um, and um, then the applications are just accessing our SDK and API, and, and so you're able to uh, just, just pull the, the, you know, if we increase the, the fidelity, you're still just accessing the same uh, tracking information as before. So it's not like our updates break any kind of uh, app support behind there. Yeah. What kind of uh, frame rate or update rate? So it's dynamic, actually. So, oh, sorry, I'll repeat the question. Um, the question is, what type of frame rate do we run? Um, and so uh, what we've actually done is we have to make this uh, not only very high fidelity and very accurate, um, but on a mobile phone, we have to be very compute conscious and also very power conscious. And so we've done something fairly intelligent where we dynamically change the frame rate. So uh, for example, if there are no hands in the scene, um, there's no reason for our, our cameras to be imaging the world at you know, a really high frame rate. Um, and by the same token, if your hand is just sitting stationary right in front of your face, we also don't have to increase the frame rate. Um, but if you're having your hands moving very quickly, then we'll ramp that up. And um, this module supports all the way up to 240 FPS. So far, we haven't really seen the need to do that, depending on, given the, the refresh rates of uh, cell phone screens right now. But we could definitely see a world in the future where you're going to want uh, much faster update uh, rates. I'll uh, go right here and then... Last question. Okay. That's a good question. So, um, so the question here is, uh, is since we use infrared light, uh, can you use this outdoors? And um, that's something where um, we have, you know, our, the design of our system is two stereo, is two cameras, and then two in, uh, infrared LEDs, and um, we're actually able to dynamically essentially subtract any external light sources. And so the the tracking runs just as well in complete darkness as it does in bright sunlight. We're interested in seeing how uh, often people use the headsets at the beach, but it is supported. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, go check it out over there uh, once, once the talks are done, and uh, we can answer more questions over there. Thanks.